There is a little document produced by the USCCB. It's called Living as Missionary Disciples. And this, this last section, you know, to, to, bring, to bring this first portion to a close, I wanted to use something from it. Because if we're thinking about being Eucharistic disciples, we have at the very end of each Mass some words spoken to us by a deacon or, or the priest. The first that we can hear, it's go forth, the Mass is ended. Or we may hear, go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Or, go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. So there is that sending forth. So having been formed... We're formed in order that we may do. Sometimes we get it wrong. Sometimes we think that it's all about doing. But first, it's about being. So being these Eucharistic disciples. And as a sort of a a lead into this afternoon session and part of what came out of the theme of this year of the Eucharist, the words from those disciples, stay with us, Lord. But of course, we also need to stay with the Lord. So at the end of Mass, we're sent out. But when we're being sent out, we're conscious of some words of Jesus that he said in another place. And the words are, Lo, I am with you always. Because in Holy Communion, we have received him. So he is now in us. There's a an old Eucharistic hymn who says, Jesus, gentlest Savior, thou art in us now. Fill us with thy goodness till our hearts overflow. And of course, you see, these are things that come from the other side of the pond. <laughs> you know, um, th that's where you would hear them. <laughs> you know? Um, so, so that's an a after communion song. You know, you are in us now. <laughs> And because he's in us, it means that we have become or we are on the road to becoming like him. Because we become the very thing that we eat. And St. Augustine said that. See what you are, the body of Christ, and become what you receive. That's the formation, being like Christ. So, having received him, then we can say, go. Go forth, the Mass is ended. So the same sort of eagerness that we had coming to, the, to that hour, <laughs> it is with the same eagerness that we are going out. But not eager because, you see, I used to tell the people at St. Patrick's in Mount Dorb, you know, um, because they would have their, their Saturday evening Mass. Of course, Saturday afternoon, it's 4 o'clock, you know. And, and then you see some little old ladies, when they get into that car, <laughs> because they want to make sure that they get to this place for the Saturday afternoon specials. 
right? The early bird specials, right? You know, yes. So they want to rush out, you know, to go get that margarita at, <laughs> you know. So it is, so the eagerness is more about going out there to get to eat rather than the eagerness of going out to evangelize. So that's why we should be eager to get out there. So we have it. We have received it. And now I want to go practice. That's what should happen. So any person who has received Jesus in the Eucharist becomes like Jesus. As the Father has sent me, Jesus said, so I send you. So go. Go forth. <laughs> the Mass has ended. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. And we're going to be announcing that gospel in word and in action. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. So that when people see you, they will know that you have been with Jesus. And not only that you have been with Jesus, but that Jesus is in here. I just received him. He is in me. And that transformation is going to take place. It has to take place. If it doesn't take place, then what is it that St. Paul says? And you see, I hate to say this, but St. Paul says that if, if there's no transformation, then we are guilty of the body and blood of Christ. Because we have eaten without perceiving that body. So we have to be very, very conscious of that body that we have received. So, you know, why, why is it when we come forward to receive communion, what does the church say we should do? We should bow. We should bow before receiving. Because it is an acknowledgement of that body and the blood. But some people sort of just give some little cursor nod in <laughs> towards Jesus. You know, because it's, it becomes an action that means nothing. We, we just do it. And those are the things that are hurting the church. So we want to know that we, we do it. So, so we say, yes, we see Jesus. So... The bishops say to us that there are four signs, four signs of living as a missionary disciple. Four signs then that I'm going to say living as a Eucharistic disciple. And the first of these signs, it is the encounter. Because in the Eucharist, what do we have? we have an encounter with Jesus. So when he says, this is my body, he's saying, encounter me. Meet me, know that this is me. And when we meet someone, we tend to be changed by that experience. Right? So it's that encounter. And therefore, when we go out, after having been with him, we want to invite persons to encounter Jesus through us. And so our invitation will be, come, let us go to the house of the Lord. That's always what we're inviting people for. So we want to make other persons come and become a part of our community. So I have encountered, and therefore I invite others to encounter. That's what we're doing.
right? The second, it is that the disciple accompanies. So Jesus accompanies us. And when we go into the world, we know that Jesus walks with us. Just as he walked with those two men on the road to Emmaus. He was with them. And so our job in the world is to accompany others. So we're going to walk with them. And we'll let them know that when they walk, they will never walk alone. Just like that song. Right? And so we're confident that we are not walking alone. And that's why we can accompany others. Through thick and through thin, no matter what, we're saying, I am with you in that. The third thing is that the disciple is conscious of being a part of a community. So it's about community building. That's one of the reasons I wanted you to work in groups. And I said, it didn't matter what size the group was. It's to let us know that we are in community with each other. And what this world needs is to become a community. And it can only happen if we, the Eucharistic disciples, bring that about. So the Eucharist says, we are in community when we celebrate that. And Paul, remember, that's one of the things that Paul criticized when Paul said, I have been told, my brothers and sisters, that when you come together, you do not wait for each other. <laughs> and he says, it shouldn't happen. So you see, we are not going to make it without our sisters and brothers. Because we are our brothers and sisters' keepers. So we have to take a personal responsibility for what is happening in the world. <laughs> a hard job, isn't it? So anytime we see anything happening out there, so we are not supposed to say, what is Washington doing about this? <laughs> but rather, what am I doing about this? What am I doing? Because I am religiously free. <laughs> right? So I don't need them to set me free. Because who... Gee, I, but I, you know, I, I'm just hinting at what's going to happen at the, in the next session, you know, because we know who sets us free. But so we have to build this community, this community that is so badly needed. And it's because we don't have this community why all of these evil things are taking place. And Jesus came into this world to end that. And Jesus sends us into the world to end that as well. So we need to do that. And, and that's what the, the fourth thing that the bishops say, that, that the disciples must be conscious of the fact that they are sent. And this is why I point out the, the things that are said to us at the end of Mass. So coming together, celebrating, 
haven't been, and, and have you noticed the way that these post-communion prayers go? They, they talk about strengthened by, nourished by, refreshed by, renewed by, or whatever it is that, you know, those are so, those words used in that post-communion collect. So these things happen to us. And because of it, then we can go out. So sisters and brothers, make sure that you don't leave Mass before the prayer after communion and that sending forth. <laughs> hmm? Because then you'd be cheating. <laughs> it's all a part of it. All apart. And I, I, I love to say to people that if you have to leave Mass early, don't come. <laughs> you know, stay, stay home <laughs> because you are not going to receive the graces that you, that you think you are going for. Because it's not magic. It's faith. Remember I said? Not magic. It's faith. Because what does magic do? Magic tries to manipulate the divine. Faith submits to the divine. So it's about submitting ourselves. Just like Mary did yesterday. Let it be done to me according to your word. That's what it is. So when we go to the Eucharist, we are formed as disciples. And so we become Eucharistic people. And we go out into the world to change the world. And we change that world one person at a time. So don't go and aim for, you know, the, the 1,800 families of, of most precious blood. <laughs> but think about that one person who you just saw in the parking lot. <laughs> or that person who, although sitting by other persons, is really sitting by himself or herself. One person at a time, we transform this world. Like in Retrovive, we say, we transform them one couple at a time. <laughs> one at a time. That's how we do it. And so this is where our morning session comes to an end. And we're going to, to have another little sustenance with lunch, after lunch, when we gather and they, we have that talk, they, for the rest of the afternoon, it would be, I don't want you to work in groups. I want you to work individually. So that it's just you and God. What you are saying to God, how you are committing yourself to live out your vocation as a Eucharistic disciple. So just you. So the chapel is open. You can go there and pray. You can, if you're brave enough, you can go walk outside. You can, what, but, but don't, don't talk with anybody else. But just you and God. And then we will bring the day to a close with with Eucharistic adoration. So it's it's almost noon, but we can we can pray together the the Angelus.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And we say together, bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts which are about to receive from thy bounty, through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> 